Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today I'm going to be talking about the 12 books that I ended up reading in September. Y'all may or may not have noticed this, but I did not come out with a mid-month wrap-up. I normally come up with a mid-month wrap-up where I talk about anywhere from 15 to 20 books, and the same goes for the end of the month wrap-up for the second half of the month. I read 12 books in the whole month of September. Um, <laughs> I have been in like this rut mentally, uh, mental health-wise, and reading right now is not my form of escapism like watching TV is. Um, in this depressive era of my life. So <laughs> I've been rewatching comfort shows and watching new shows and stuff like that. So um, reading has kind of been on the back burner for me and reading has just been difficult in general recently. Um, I only really consume books via audio right now or if they're novellas, I'll do an ebook. It's really hard for me to read a book physically or an ebook if I can't finish it all in one sitting. My brain cannot focus because it thinks about spiraling thoughts instead like I can't get my mind focused but when there's an audiobook in my ear and I'm forced to listen to it like my mind isn't derail anyway y'all don't want to hear about that um so I'm gonna talk about the 12 books that I ended up reading in September I had a fine fine reading month obviously number wise it's not what I normally read but reading isn't based on the quantity of books you read obviously for me this is different than how many books I normally read so like it's a significant difference I don't think I've read less than 15 books in a whole month the whole entire time I've started my booktube channel so <laughs> um 12 books is not a lot um but I read some pretty good ones so that's a plus so let's get into those books the first one that I have is one that's been on many a TBRs people have been wanting me to read it for a while and that is Funny Feelings by Tara DeWitt this is a contemporary age gap friends to lovers uh, fake dating romance. This is really sweet. Our heroine is a comedian and this is her fake dating relationship with her manager who is like her best friend. He used to be a comedian as well. He has a daughter who is deaf and our heroine in here knows sign language so she's able to communicate with her. And this is a really sweet romance. I really enjoyed it. Some people really love this one more than the co-op or vice versa. I read the co-op first and I think I would give I gave both of these books the same exact rating I think I gave both of them four stars I really liked it it's not very memorable to me personally um just like again I've been very picky with books that I'm absolutely obsessed with and love so this was a great amazing read I was just expecting like god tier level because so many of my friends love this book which it's a good book I guess I was wanting to love it more than I did and my mood it definitely could be affecting that so I guess when I'm in a better mood and I want to reread this I'll definitely pick this one up again I really loved the like the comedian aspect is very unique I really liked that and obviously the deaf representation I really enjoyed that um and just these two characters flying for each other I really liked that and the connection they formed throughout the whole book. So um, for tropes for this one, you have age gap, fake dating, friends to lovers, there's great banter, there's longing, and it's a single dad. I give this book four out of five stars. Next is one that I was a little bit worried about um, because of its taboo nature. This is Torn by Carrie and Cole. This is my first Carrie and Cole book and I was not disappointed. I was honestly like worried to read this because I thought I'd be icked out because there are certain things that ick me out in taboo darker darker romances um but this one what I knew is that our heroine I think it's like 18 or 19 and um this is her romance with her dad's best friend he's basically like he was there when she was born and so I was like oh is this gonna be icky let's see but I know some of my friends love this book and so I was like let's try it let's do it um and it's way different than I thought it was going to be so basically the heroine's parents um, were like 15 when she was born and so was the hero the hero was 15 and so they kind of grew up together in a sense they grew up together um and they did not realize like they did not have feelings for each other romantically at all until she was 18. I think they started having feelings at one point and they're like what is going on why am I feeling this way like this is like my best friend what why am I feeling this way so it's not icky I didn't find this icky at all there is a taboo nature of like how do we tell her dad that we're liking each other and all this stuff um and I'm very interested to read other Karen Cole books for sure especially the um I think there's a series about the heroine's dad and like his romance and there's another book in this series that I think I'm gonna buddy read with Zay and that one seems like very interesting as well and like a very vast age gap also and the age gap in here didn't really bother me I really connected to our heroine in this book because one of the reasons why the hero 
was hesitant to be with her is because he's like, you're 18, you gotta go experience life, go be wild, go do stuff. And she's like, that's not appealing to me whatsoever. Like I am 18, yeah, I'm young. I already know that I want a family and I want a kid. Like, and I want the white picket fence, I want everything. Like I want that. And I don't want, I don't need to experience these other things to know that I want that right now. So I really, really related to her in that aspect. So tropes in this one, age gap, books with pets, dad's best friend, forbidden, friends to lovers, motorcycles, taboo, and you have a tatted hero. I gave this book four out of five stars. This next one took me a long time to read because it was an ebook. It was like 300 something pages. So it took me like over a half the month to read this book. It's a good book. I think I gave this book four stars. Like it's good. Again, my mood and my reading and my mental state right now is not up for reading long ebooks. Not happening. Um, but this is Prize of the Warlord by Rebecca F. Kenny. And I really did enjoy this one. If you want like unique fantasy romances, I've never heard of this author before. I think I saw this book on a list for chronic illness and disability representation and it's a fantasy book. And I was like, oh my gosh, I need that representation in a fantasy book. Let's do it. So this one's about Exania who is kidnapped from her family home from a rival warlord named Cronin. He kidnaps her because he wants to uh, basically ransom her off for some money and specifically the land that her family took from him. And while they're waiting for like negotiations to happen, Exania is Cronin's captive. So she has to stay with him and get to know his people. And she's even like completely chained to his bed at one point. Like he doesn't do anything to her to make sure she doesn't leave. He chains her to the bed. <laughs> but then uh, Exania realizes that she wants to stay with the warlord who kidnapped her. I really did enjoy this one. Um, I love captor captive romances, not in real life, obviously, <laughs> um, but they're really fun to read about, like a fun little escapism. I really loved like the captor captive aspect in here. And I really love this book too, because it had extremely short chapters. Like give me a book any day that has really, really, really short chapters because like I'll fly through it. I didn't fly through this one, but like I probably finished it faster than I normally would um <laughs> if they weren't short chapters because like I finished a short chapter and I'm like oh okay the next one will only take me three minutes to read let's do that one. Oh, I finished that one let's do another three minutes let's do it <laughs> so I really liked that one because this book used to be on kindle vela which I think is like a like you post a chapter a week kind of situation and now it's a full published book I really enjoyed the representation here also Exania has asthma um, it's never explicitly stated in the book because this is a fantasy book um but she has asthma and what I assume to be IBS and she's lactose intolerant so I love seeing that type of representation in a fantasy book like give it to me all day long a memorable quote is from Exania and she says I fight every day of my life I fight harder than anyone else just to seem normal because my body is always battling me like I felt that Stick it hard. Oh my gosh. Okay, so representation again, it's never explicitly stated in the book, but you have a dairy allergy, IBS, and asthma. For tropes, you have barbarian, captor captive, chronic illness rep, fantasy romance, faded mates, forbidden, rivals to lovers. There's a scene where he brushes her hair. I'm a sucker for that. Um, kidnapping. It's on Kindle Limited and you have a possessive hero. I gave this book four to five stars. I needed a quick little novella read. So I picked up this absolutely bizarre novella. Like it's absolutely bonkers. Okay, this is Monster Island by Beatrix Hollow. This book is crazy. So Sammy, our heroine, gets thrown onto this reality TV show where like convicts <laughs> and people in jail, you can either choose to like rot in jail for the rest of your life or get thrown onto this reality TV show where they dump you on an island full of monsters and they film it and basically film you being killed and like monsters attacking you or whatever. So Sammy agrees, not because she's like wants to get out of jail. It's because her dream in life is to be uh, with a monster, okay? <laughs> this was so funny, so funny and fun. Like, yes, she's with like a giant troll or orc or giant or something along those lines. I don't remember, but I was cackling while reading this book. It's so stick and funny. If you want good size difference too, like this one is the one to read for that. Um, oh, it's an ogre also, sorry, by the way, I wrote on here. It's an ogre, monsters. There's two things, if you know what I mean. Um, it's a reality show and there's definitely size difference. I gave this one uh, three stars. It's a fun, fun, funny read. I wanted another short monster romance with some size difference. So I picked up a Virido, Viridios. I'm so sorry, I'm butchering that. Um, but this is by L.A. Holloway. I read the author's note at the beginning of this book and she basically was like, I wanted a romance for Groot in Guardians of the Galaxy. So I made one. And so the hero in here is basically Groot 
from Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> so this is his romance with a human scientist on his planet. He basically takes her in as a companion, like kidnaps her from her uh, where she lives, kidnaps her and locks her up and is like, oh, you're going to be my companion now. He's like the sweetest giant creature ever. He doesn't realize like that's bad, um, but he just wants a companion in life and he thinks that this woman is absolutely stunning. And then like the two of them get to know each other. There's a language barrier at first, um, but then she takes this magical plant to like learn how to talk to him, I guess. But this was really cute and sweet. If you want like a cute, sweet monster romance, with size difference, I really recommend this one. Uh, tropes, you have alien romance, cinnamon roll hero, kidnapping, it's on Kindle Unlimited. There's a language barrier, the never been kissed trope for the hero. A scientist, it's novella length and there is size difference. I also gave this one four out of five stars. It was a fun read, like a four star for a novella is a solid novella for me. Next I have The Wreckage of Us by Brittany C. Cherry. It's one of the Brittany books I have not read yet. And I was puzzlingly surprised by this because I haven't really heard about this book before some of my friends like they've probably read it I just haven't really seen it on booktube a lot and I didn't know how I would feel about this one but I did enjoy this one um this one's about Hazel and Ian so Hazel has a pretty bad home life she lives with her mom and her mom's boyfriend and they're not doing some great things and she needs to go do something else so she decides to get a job at a ranch in their small town and there she meets Ian Parker whose grandfather owns the ranch and he decides to make like Hazel's life a living hell while she works on the ranch because he doesn't like her mom and her mom's boyfriend. So he's not the biggest fan of her and he lets it known, but then he starts to get to know Hazel and his priorities definitely shift and he starts falling for the very dark, like dressing girl. Like she wears black every day and black eyeliner, and, like black makeup all the time. Like, and he's a total like country boy. So it's a very interesting dynamic for sure. This was a solid read from Brittany for me. I did enjoy this one. I love seeing Ian and Hazel fall for each other on page. And it's definitely a unique book by Brittany in the fact that like, they're like high school age um, and a little bit older. Like they graduate in this book, I'm pretty sure, or she does. Uh, I think he's a little bit older than her. She graduates in this book. But normally when Brittany has like, a younger age characters she has like a time jump halfway through the book and I was honestly expecting that but there wasn't so it was very refreshing but then the hero uh turns out to be like this famous rock star dude with his band and I'm just not a fan of that I because I don't care like I don't care about <laughs> the rock star fame trope so like I didn't really care about that part so it's not my favorite book by Brittany but overall I did enjoy this one and I think it's a solid read from Brittany um trigger warning here for drug and alcohol use and domestic violence for tropes you have small town great banter Kindle limited and babies um and the fact of the heroine's sister her mom ends up getting pregnant and at one point in the book she has to have like custody of her baby sister when she gives birth to her but overall great read i gave it four stars next i have lizzie blake's best mistake by Maisie eddings so this was a buddy read with zay over at witty reads we've been wanting to read this one for a while um and this one definitely gave me vibes of out on a land by hannah bonham young so if you want like a book without with those vibes i definitely recommend this one i think hannah literally said like if you're wanting to read a similar book to mine, pick this one up. And I totally agree with her. So this is about Rake and Lizzie. So Rake is from Australia and I think he's in the US for like some business stuff. And he has like a one night stand that turns to like a little bit more, like they have like multiple night stands until he leaves for Australia. Um, and they have some fun together for the next few nights that they, after they meet, things get a little complicated when Lizzie calls up Rake one day and is like, hey, um, I'm pregnant, I'm keeping this baby, you don't have to be a part of its life, but I just wanna let you know. And he's like, no, I'm moving to America to be with you. Like, I'm gonna be with you and this baby. We're gonna figure this out, it's gonna happen. I loved how caring and patient and kind um, Rake was towards Lizzie, I loved that. And Lizzie, I loved her as a character, her chaotic brain, like I really related to in some instances. She has ADHD and I am the only one in my family that does not have ADHD. And so I'm around it constantly. Um, and so like, I really felt for, like not personally, cause I don't have it. I do not have ADHD. So I don't know like personally what it feels like, but I have known from my family and my friends who also have ADHD what it's like to live with it. And I really felt for her and some of the things that she was very frustrated by because of her ADHD um, and how bad she tries to like combat some of the negative aspects of it. I thought the representation was done so well. So if you wanna read a book with great ADHD rep, I really recommend this one. For tropes in this one, you have Cinnamon Roll Hero, Australian Man, One Night to More, Opposites Attract, A Quirky Heroine, It's a Rom-Com, They're Roommates at One Point, It's a Surprise Baby, and You Have a Worshipping Hero. I gave this book four to five stars. If you wanna read like 
a good like surprise baby romance. I really recommend this one. Next I have Teach Me by Olivia Day. This is like a small town teachers romance where both characters are older than what you would typically see in a romance book. So Rose is a bad A history high school teacher and she's a little upset when some of her AP classes get basically given to a new incoming teacher that's coming in. His name is Martin and he moved to this small town to be closer to his daughter who's a senior in high school. And so they don't really get off on the right foot when they first meet because she's very upset that she got that he got some of her classes that she absolutely loves. Um, but the more time they spend together and get to know one another, they fall for each other, obviously. I love these characters with their communication skills like everyone would benefit reading this book to learn how to properly communicate with someone you like or talk to or whatever the case may be your your husband your boyfriend your girlfriend whatever the case may be like they have great communication skills and it's probably because they're older characters <laughs> Honestly, the representation here is with plus size rep. I love Rose and how much she loves herself and her body. A uh, tropes, you have a caretaking scene. So Rose takes care of Martin when he has like severe back pain. Um, I thought that was a very important part of the book and definitely shifted their relationship teetering on the edge of like romance. So I loved that. Um, Grumpy Sunshine, where the heroine is the grump and the hero is the sunshine. Workplace romance, it's an older couple. I think both of them are in their late 40s, if I'm not mistaken. Single dad, slow burn romance is a sweet hero and they're both teachers. I also gave this one four out of five stars. Next I have Here With Me by Brooke Montgomery. This is the first book in her Sugarland Creek series. I got an arc of the audio of this book from Forever and Always PR. So thank y'all so much for that. This is a forbidden-ish age gap romance because this is a romance between our heroine and her ex's dad. She works on her family's ranch. Um, and she is one of the horse trainers there and she ends up one night having this amazing night with this ruggedly handsome man, okay? And it isn't until after he gets hired to work at the ranch that she realizes that's her ex's dad. And um, they're trying to figure out if they should even be in a relationship or not because he doesn't want to ruin his very already rocky relationship with his son. So it's very complicated. Um, but I really loved these small town like cowboy vibes for sure. It was a sweet but also hot read so I loved that um, and how devoted the hero was to the heroine. And I also really loved like the horse training aspects. I thought that was really cool and the heroine was just an overall really cool character to me. There were just some things that didn't wholly vibe with this book for me. Um, I just watched Jessen's new video about like her sitting down and talking about like spice in romances. And um, I felt like, cause I watched that video and then I read this book and I was like, I feel like I feel Justin in this aspect. I already feel Justin in many of the points that she made in that video. Um, really go check it out. I'll link it down below if you haven't seen it yet. I love all the points that she makes, but I very much feel the way that she feels when reading this book specifically, because I felt like there were certain scenes in here when they were like together together, you know, that didn't really mesh with the whole vibe of the book to me. Like it didn't really, like I would read these scenes and I'd be like, oh, cause it didn't really vibe with the book for me personally. And also I was just a little bit, because I am from the South, okay. And um, I've, <laughs> I've talked to some of my friends who are also from the South, also from Texas. We are not the biggest fan, or I'll speak for myself. I am not the biggest fan of the hero's country accent. I feel like it's very, very stereotyped <laughs> and it got a little bit annoying for me. Um, I couldn't really get used to it and the country accent just wasn't genuine for me personally. I think it, it wasn't my favorite thing ever, <laughs> um, but that's just me personally. And maybe I also just couldn't get past that. So um, anyway, I gave this book 3.5 stars. It was a solid read. There were just some things that weren't my favorite while reading it. Next I have The Orc Prince by Quay Hudson. Um, this is a very interesting read. I also think it's a duet, which I haven't yet picked up the second book. Um, but this one took me a little bit to read, even though it was only 300 pages, like it still took me a while. Um, and I was really liking it. Our heroine in here is married to this very cruel king. She ends up almost getting killed one night by the king and his um, right hand general dude who he's in a relationship with. He's been cheating on her this whole time. She's escaping and uh, gets in the river and falls off a waterfall. And our orc character in here, our hero, ends up saving her and bringing her back to his cottage. And it's basically a slow romance between the two of them in like 
mated bliss in this cabin in the middle of nowhere but then the realities of the world she is in and the fact that she's a queen come bustling back in with a raging force there is a lot going on this one I didn't expect for it to be this type of book there is like on page like there's definitely abuse from her husband physical abuse mental abuse sexual abuse like it's a lot um, so please be aware of that. Some of it's like on page, but this orc hero is so stinking sweet, so sweet. And he wants nothing more than to make Arya super, 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 super happy. And I love that. So this one ended on a little bit of a cliffhanger. So I need to pick up book two very soon, but I'm going to give this one, um, I think 3.75 out of five stars. Next I have a DNF. I have Stealing the Troll's Heart by Le Leon Riley. Um, this is an orc romance. The heroine ends up across this orc in the woods and um, they almost kill each other, bite each other at a knife point, um, but then she's able to escape. And it's been months since he's seen this woman, but he's like absolutely obsessed with her. Like can't stop thinking about her. And then they bump into each other again. And it starts up this physical relationship. Um, and then I DNF'd it at that point because it like, Ugh, I don't really know how to describe it. Like the troll in here, the dude, I don't vibe well with men <laughs> or trolls in this instance, even if they're fictional, who um, hit, throw things, like are very aggressive. I don't like that. Like aggressive, like in not a romance, like a romance type of way, you know what I mean? Aggressive in like physical aggressiveness. Like it makes me scared. <laughs> so. Um, and I was just like, this dude is now unredeemable in my eyes. So I DNF'd it at like 40%, maybe, possibly, I don't know. And the last one that I have is The Breakup Artist by um, Aaron Clark and uh, Laura Lovely. This was a fun little read about our heroine who is a wheelchair user and her trying to go through with her dating life. Also the ableism that she has to experience, like absolutely horrible while dating, awful. People come to her, write her emails and want her to make and form breakup letters because they can't figure out how to break up with their partner. Um, and so she writes one of the breakup letters to a guy named Jacoby, may or may not turn out to be the guy she's crushing on at the coffee shop she goes to, but she doesn't know that that's him. I think I'm gonna give this one a solid three stars. It was a fine book. Um, this heroine kind of got on my nerves. I also don't care for secret keeping, like, mm. <laughs> Like, I don't, I don't care for it. I don't like secret keeping. Like, that is a big no-no for me. And um, the fact that a lot of this book was her, like, dealing with, oh, when do I tell him? When do I tell him? When do I tell him? Should I tell him? And I'm like, you could have just told him right when you found out. And then all of this would be, like, not happening right now. You wouldn't have to be thinking of all of this. So, anyway, that's just my two cents about that. But I loved the narrator and I loved the disability representation. I loved the, like, bad A woman boss aspect. Like, she's trying to be form her own company with her friends, which I really loved. So, I really liked that. Um, and also, I feel like if you're, like, a coffee connoisseur, you'd really like this one because it really delves into coffee because that's what Jake is passionate about. I don't drink coffee, but I still really appreciate it as someone who doesn't even drink coffee. So, that is it. Those are all the books that I ended up reading in September. It was, like, an okay reading month for me. I did read a bunch of four-star books. Um, I think I was possibly more picky with my books, so that's a good thing, I guess. <laughs> uh, let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and what your favorite book was that you read in September. I don't know what mine is. <laughs> it might be Lizzie Blake's Best Mistake. I think that one might be my favorite one because that one was just so fun. Anyways, if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me the heartbreak, the the breaking heart emoji, um, like for the breakup artist. <laughs> um, anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see you all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.